Take a seat. Sit back and relax. Because you are listening to Real Talk Radio, where the talk gets real. Welcome to the Binge. Welcome everybody to Real Talk Radio. This is your boy Justin JLB. Today is the binge edition where we basically go and we review movies, TV shows, whatever have you. And it's what everybody is talking about. Of course, I'm referring to the Netflix mini documentary series Tiger King, which is exclusively only on Netflix and... uh, Wow, what a show. Before I go on to anything else, I do have a special guest with me to go through this entire documentary series with. And this is none other than a fellow American uh, from Nebraska, Mr. Jason. How are you doing, bud? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm I'm, I'm Jason. Uh No, um... (laughs) Yeah, we, we obviously know each other a little bit from our wrestling podcast. Um, I'm excited to do this. I, I actually binge-watched this in two days, so three and a half hours a day. Uh, then just yesterday, I actually watched the Joel McHale, you know, the reunion tour or whatever they did. <laughs> right. Uh, the because he had to. Edition. That's it, because he had to basically interview everyone on FaceTime. He, yeah. basically, he basically mentioned that they uh the netflix series gave him an iphone and said good luck it's probably a joke he probably just had his own phone but either way uh yeah so that was a little bonus episode because everyone was excited kind of cool that that happened didn't really necessarily need it didn't really know much i don't Uh, think you gained much from it I, i i mean we gained a little bit from from jeff and Lori, basically just denying stuff and Everybody else, I think we kind of knew where they stood. Right. Yeah. So in that retrospect, so. the documentary did good on that. But we, we can't we can't start at the end. I don't know of no. any show that starts at the end. That's just Anything the- made by Quentin Tarantino starts at the end. This is true. You, you <laughs> might be honest. Something like um, but we're, we're not nearly as artistic and as creative as Quentin. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> We should start at the beginning. We, we should definitely. <laughs> for sure. So, well, I guess to just give a little brief little thing, like you, I binge watched it uh, in two days. I literally watched the third to the fourth to the seventh episode just straight. So it was a lot of it was a lot of Carol Baskins mentioned and a lot of Carol Tiger King. Carol Baskins. Indeed. Indeed. So uh, we'll start off with episode one, where they pretty much introduce us to none other than the crazy man himself, Joe Exotic, who is the owner of GW Zoo, where he holds over 200 tigers in the zoo, hence where he got his name, the Tiger King. On top of that, throw the BS flag on that, though. There is no way they have 200 tigers there. That's among I mean, the best that, that they that they pulled in the show. It's fine, but it's it's got to be true because I'm not only taking that from the show, I'm taking that from news articles I saw at the time. I'm taking that from a Spotify uh, yeah. podcast that a journalist Robert Moore has done on the show, where he was actually there as well. So he had to have had. I mean, I don't know if anyone actually counted that there was 200, but there was definitely a lot. In the in the documentary, didn't they claim that Joe says there's over 200 tigers here? That's possible, but a lot of other places were claiming that too. So okay. they got to go off okay. Joe's word, I guess. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's gold right there. Uh, gold right there. <laughs> Uh, it d- takes you through Joe Exotica and his zoo. His real name escapes me at the moment, but his last name is so weird. It's like Schleimage or there, there's the Schl- Schlimmer or Schlammer or whatever. Schli- slippy, slappy, swimmy. Oh, Samsonite. That was way off. <laughs> 
I love the Dumb and Dumber reference. That is just awesome. <laughs> um, no, it was whatever it was. And then, of course, at one point it was Maldonado because he'd married that feller. His name was Travis. Travis, yeah, Maldonado. Well, and then he hyphenated it at one point. I mean, yeah, he, he changed names several times throughout the series. <laughs> Yeah. So originally how this all even began, because one, why is there filming being done on this crazy tiger loving zoo maintenancing man who first and foremost, you know, we don't we didn't know what was going to happen to him when they did. Right. Because they were filming him straight up live at the time in like 2007. They started filming. Originally, a filmmaker was there. Damn it, his name escapes me at the moment. You're supposed a to have a screen up, bud. I'm definitely supposed to have Rick Rick Kirkham, Rick. okay? Do yep. not Rick. test me. Not a boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all kudos to IMDB. This is none of my doing. So originally uh, originally Rick Kirkham was there. He uh, started off talking a lot about Joe Exotic because he was there to film Joe Exotic's reality show. And he was a well-known producer and has filmed various amount of other things. So he was there to start filming a show for Joe Exotic to make it better because he had his own YouTube channel, which, by the way, his YouTube channel is still up. So by all means, that link will be below and you should definitely check that out. <laughs> um, I mean, look, the, what the guy did was wrong, which we will get to. But at the end of the day, you can't deny his undeniable eccentric way his attitude things don't break down the way they did in the last three years there the dudes this as famous as he is right now for a, a television series and he's getting paid on it like sometimes you have to actually just go ahead and admit your life mistakes and I know he's not right now and he's he's probably got a commissary just loaded with money right now because of his other stuff but he's gonna be using commissary <laughs> Well, no, but I mean, at the same time, we're, we're also going to get to that because chances are he doesn't have a dime to his name. Um, so basically, the show takes you through several things. OK, the show takes you through him having the zoo, uh, the people on this zoo that he gets and he hires to maintain the zoo. Many of them are either ex-convicts or meth heads or just basically Trantians down he picks on up at the bus station. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like any any person that pretty much doesn't have anything going from them, he takes advantage of them and uh, manipulates them to come work for this zoo. He is man sex object thing. Yes, his man sex object thing. Um, and then basically, so throughout all of this, he gets involved with Carol Baskin. Uh, who owns a big cat rescue sanctuary reserve kind of in Florida. And she basically is trying to get Joe Exotic shut down because she believes that he's harming his animals and his tigers and he's just not doing right by his animals and so on and so forth. Uh, do you have anything to say on Carol freaking Baskins? Oh, there's lots to say on Carol Baskin, but... We're going to, uh, I, I think we just ought to move on and get the backstory and then we can talk about the craziness of each individual character. Um, <laughs> you do Joe Exotic really well. I must well, say. Well, I, unfortunately you've already mentioned to everybody that I'm from Nebraska. So, um, I know people like Joe Exotic. Okay. Um, my sister has been married to people like Joe Exotic. So, <laughs> um, I can't I can't really say that uh yeah that I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh you know and that's it and he's just he's just a crazy guy. And all in all this guy carries two pistols with him at all times and he claims it's not for the animals but it's actually for the people. He doesn't trust people at all. Claims to have loved his animals. Um, which he did at one point. They did mention that in the documentary. At first, he was kind of like a sanctuary. And then as time went on, he became to start getting just more animals and more animals and start opening up to do more to people. And then he just became involved with himself way too much where he was more the show than the actual zoo and the animals were. So he kind of got uh, sucked into his own ego um, if you will. So 
with that, they basically take you on through talking about everybody at the zoo that works with him, such as, uh, you know, John Reich, who was the manager of the GW Zoo, who has no legs. He has two amputated legs. Um, not because and of tigers. Not because of tigers, which, honestly, I instantly thought that right away. And thank God they had mentioned he got rid of his legs. I'm not really... He said it was like a fishing accident or like it was a uh, something in the water. It was something along those lines. I totally don't recall exactly what happened, but I had nothing to do with tigers. Correct. Um, and on top of that, one that did have something to do with tigers, though, was also Kelsey Safe Safery, who was the animal keeper at the zoo, who, in fact, had lost her um, hand uh, due tiger. to... To the tiger, due to feeding, uh, due to feeding the tiger, and uh, she's she, this girl's employee of the century, because after the amputation happened, and then seven days later, she was legit already back at the zoo working. She just considered it another day in the life at the zoo, and I'm here I with the smell of blood on her. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't you can't not smell like blood when you got an open wound. Um, she doesn't necessarily even say, and I've seen a few interviews, one with, uh, Joel. Uh, I've also seen one that she did with, uh, David Spade on his YouTube channel. He actually did one with her. She doesn't really mention much. She just claims it was just kind of another day at the zoo and that she does, she was trying to feed the animals like she does every day. And this just happened. We don't know if there was blood or not. I imagine she wouldn't be that silly to have had blood on her and try and feed a tiger. No, what I'm saying is, is the when she went back, uh, she she hadn't completely healed, and so the smell of blood would have been on her on her person just because she had an open wound there. Well, the I, I imagine she wasn't feeding the tigers the day she came back. I I could almost imagine that she was most likely doing various other things that involved the maintenancing rather than anything with tigers at she first. She could have been managing the Walmart truck. Oh, Jesus, right. That, <laughs> oh, man. I, I, now, I don't know. I, I, I was completely flabbergasted. First of all, I guess let's tell them what we were talking about. So, <laughs> Joe, Joe Exotic had was talking about how he would feed these tigers, and I guess also his workers from this truck. It's basically a truck <laughs> full of expired sure. walmart meat um which what <laughs> what yeah I've, I've never heard of this is this like an actual thing can you randomly just get expired meat from various stores in the states like what is going I, on i wish I, I wish i could tell you the answer to that because maybe i'd have a lot cheaper meat in my house but oh jesus um, <laughs> um, uh, apparently, yeah, in the show, a Walmart truck shows up, and he does explain it a little bit. He says once, if somebody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do a Joe Exotic voice here. When when people go into Walmart and they grab themselves <laughs> some meat and they put it in the in the basket, they get all the way on up there to the counter and they're getting ready to pay for it, and then suddenly their card gets declined. Um, Walmart can't put that back in the freezers. They can't sell that now. So they put it all out back. They just they just put it in this truck. And, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's me or the dog food factory. And so I guess I win, huh? <laughs> you want to do that really, really well. <laughs> saying that, but, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty legit, I, I guess. And I do know that, like, dog food uh, factories and whatnot, do get their food from from you know B grade foods that don't go to humans and uh, the blood from from like slaughterhouses and whatnot and then uh, just added I did not know that Walmart was part of that you know I assumed that stuff could go back on the shelves but uh, yeah. it doesn't make sense that it couldn't because I've known people family <laughs> mm. myself to be <laughs> at Walmart for three four hours before so you know started the spoiling. Yeah. No, that's it. That's I just was flabbergasted by that. Well, his explanation, too, didn't really make sense, really. So you take it off the shelf, you go and you pay for it, and then your card gets declined. Or for whatever reason, you decide you don't want it. You can't put it back. Correct. That's craziness. Like, especially yeah, if it's within 30 minutes or, like, an hour. 
It's not going to go bad. They can't prove how long you've had it. That some kid didn't wipe his wipe his Corona boogers all over it or something. You know. Dude, this is this is pre Corona days. This is way be. This might be H N one days, but hey, his flu boogers all over it. Whatever. It doesn't matter what kind of boogers they are. Child's boogers are on your food. I don't want it. Thank you. That's very valid. And he would be feeding this even his boyfriend or his husband, John Finley, uh, who was just uh, like 20 years old when he met Joe Exotic. He was like thrilled with eating this expired meat. And also, this guy's awesome. I love Eric Cowie. Eric Cowie, who's just kind of like the stoner guy. Uh, if you will, he seemed like he was always high. He's the taller dude with the blonde hair. He oh, seemed yeah. like, but he's not. He doesn't even use. No, and that's it. And I, he, he mentioned that at the last like, episode. Yeah, he he comes across like, and and if he's listening to this, I apologize, brother. But I understand why people think that. I'm no, just... and he, he I'm, I'm sure he knows, and I'm sure he's been getting that all the time. Um, but the guy was super chill, though, at the same time. He's just one of those. He just reminds me of a hippie from, like, the 60s, which why I guess everyone thought he used. Um, and he just, <laughs> and he was just, like, a laid-back guy. Even, you know, when he mentioned about his fame, he was just like, look, I'm just a guy on a documentary. That's all I am. You know, like, I don't consider myself famous or whatever. I don't get why everyone's... Going bazonkers, and yeah, word. but is that a word? Bazonkers? I, I feel like that's a word. That's that's gotta it's be a, a word. That's a Canadian word. A word from Canada. A word from Canada. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then and then so, essentially, as he's taking care of the zoo and he's doing his TV show and he's you know getting all of his the film crew there and getting the TV show ready, he suddenly decides that he wants to run for president of the United <laughs> States of America. America. And, America. And, and so he tries this. He starts, you know, just a bunch of money. He's dishing out a bunch of money here and there. Uh, we should probably backtrack, actually, because before he tries to become the president of America, things with him and Carol Baskin get really bad. Okay. Because on his TV show, he's just constantly bashing her. There was one YouTube clip where he takes, he, it's a Carol Baskin blow up doll or some kind of doll. And he shoots the, he shoots the, he shoots the, the doll in the head with his gun, which has many pistols that he has on him. And just basically always constantly threatening her. Didn't uh, he so tie it to a, a tree and, and. So this is something I, because I am from Nebraska, I'm very, very familiar with, is the redneck love of Tannerite. By the way, I do have that same redneck love of Tannerite, and there are plenty of Canadians with that love too, just so you know. Right. Um, but I think he straps Tannerite to it and blows it. That's the the same doll he shoots in the with the Tannerite, yes. isn't it? Okay. Uh, so yes. Or I mean, it could have been another doll. For all I know, who knows, right? Like it could have. Been <laughs> Um, this man was equally abs obsessed with Carol Baskin as Carol Baskin was obsessed with him. And it just got bad to the point where, um, you know, he was doing mall shows, uh, around the, around just America doing mall shows with his tigers and, uh, started getting more famous. And Carol Baskin was also noted, noticing this as well. She called PETA, the animal rights activist people to, uh, try and do something, get him shut down. And it just was a back and forth feud. Never stopped, never ended, just back and forth here and there. Um, he ended up calling his place, like, uh, at one point, the Big Cat Rescue. Rescue Entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah, so he basically violated her. And this is actually what he got caught with from her. Yeah. Is He's able to get sued. He ends up calling his his uh, shows Big Cat Rescue Entertainment with a logo that looks similar to hers, and it becomes copyright infringement. Like the best right. he can do, it's copyright infringement. But regardless, dude, like you know, you're getting all these people to come film for you and stuff. You can easily get someone to make you a logo or something. So I just wanted to be spiteful. His ego was definitely bigger than his logic. Um, tenfold, oh. no matter which yeah. episode we're referring to, his ego is always bigger than anything you want to talk about. Well, he might say there's some things that are bigger, but 
That's just because mm. he's that. He's the kind of guy who would talk like that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, very valid. So she ends up suing him, and they go through a back and forth um, lawsuit. Um, he ends up losing like a million dollars or close to a million dollars. Uh, he has to sell the place or he has to take the place out of his name. And this is where he meets Jeff Lowe. Oh, That's yep. it. And Jeff Lowe, who he thought at the time was like this big millionaire guy, he drove a Corvette. Uh, he has a lot of money. He did some stuff in Vegas and so on and so forth. And he thought, hey, I won't lose the zoo if it's in your name like any any stupid individual who signs over a business to someone else without really knowing the person <laughs> joe exotic got screwed over in that fact because then although joe exotic was still working at the zoo oh we can't forget about his music we cannot forget about his music Oh, my Lord. Um, fun fact about his music, though, that was not him singing and that he didn't write any of those songs. It's legit. He did not <laughs> sing that and he did not write any of those songs, including Kitty Kitty. He didn't write that. Kitty Kitty is also still on YouTube. The full song, by the way, it's still freaking hilarious. It's horrible, but it's hilarious. Um, so one of the main things that Joe Exotic was completely obsessed about Aside from Carol Baskin, was Carol Baskin's ex-husband's disappearance. It's Carol Baskin. <laughs> so to kind of do that really quickly, Carol Baskin met Don Lewis uh, like 25 years ago when she was only 19. He was already like 35 to 40 years old. Uh, they kind of clicked and then they've been together for... God knows how long, about 20, 20 years. And they decide to come out with this tiger sanctuary thing together. So it was really, it was their idea. It was them that got involved into that. And however, Don Lewis was more into the business side of things, uh, breeding, selling and breeding the tigers and so on and so forth. Whereas Carol was getting more along the side of being able to save these tigers I don't know if this was in the documentary or in, a, in the podcast I was hearing, but basically she mentioned that although she was down with the selling and the breeding of the cat, she realized essentially she wasn't doing any good because it ended up going to the wrong people. Then it ended up going to people who were killing these animals still and so on and so forth. So she had a change of heart and she wanted to save the animals. And this caused a ripple between the two. And this created a lot of arguments. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, there, there was definitely some arguments between the two. Um, turns out eventually, uh, according to some court documents and friends, um, he was planning on filing for divorce just before he... Yeah, so he so there was this big fight, and on the podcast, on the Robert Moore podcast, uh, it does mention the secretary was on the podcast. Don Lewis' secretary mentions that he had given her papers and said keep it safe and she had put it in a way however like two days later he never came back to work um and then a week later she still hasn't seen him and she called carol and was like hey what's going on uh she's like oh i don't know don is always busy he's always doing things i'm sure he's fine so eventually she decides to open up these papers she's like hey you know she, she opens up the papers and she sees that it's a restraining order for, uh, from don to carol baskin and it mentions that he is going to also leave her um, in these documents. I don't. It wasn't necessarily the... It's weird because in the podcast, it mentions it's a restraining order, but it might have been both. It might have been the restraining order and the divorce papers. Yeah, either but way. It's, it's either way, there, he basically is... He's already made his decision. He wants to bounce. If you're getting a restraining order, you're pretty much being separated and you're pretty much going to get divorced. Uh, by the way, all this, he's a multimillionaire, this guy. And this guy um, was also into a lot of shady stuff, too. Okay? This guy would go to Costa Rica uh, every so often in his private plane uh, for, for, like, weeks on end. There's a bunch of rumors as to what he was doing there. Um, he would do private businesses elsewhere on certain other states. I'd go down. He would also go down to Mexico. He's a huge businessman. He apparently was worth like 20, 15 to 20 million dollars. Uh, so he's he's rich. He's a, he's a rich dude. 
His family was also in the documentary explaining uh, a lot of these things too. Once Don Lewis was like nowhere to be found, they start sending out a search party and then a missing persons case. And lo and behold, can't find anything. They do, however, find one of his planes. Oh, no. Do you remember where they found his plane? I don't. Well, they found his plane plane somewhere with a bunch of his stuff, and he's nowhere to be found. It's either his plane or his car. I believe it was his car. It was near, like, the airport or something. Um, So basically, they file missing persons. Uh, The cops do a little bit of investigating. Uh, but they can't really find anything, and essentially it's kind of uh, a shut case. Then we find out her brother is the chief of police, or like a uh, head police officer for that county in Florida. So then it starts getting fishy. Um, the the uh, Lewis's family. Her, I think it was her father, his father. So the, the, basically, the family never really liked Carol to begin with, right? Um, but they found it all very fishy. Uh, the na- the will was changed. So, the yeah, what happened is the power of attorney was changed like two days before his disappearance to be in the event of my disappearance, not in the event of my death. The reason that's important is in the States, nobody is determined. You are not determined deceased until five years after your disappearance. If you disappeared, Um, you're not assumed deceased until that point. And so the power of attorney happened in the event of my disappearance rather than in the event of my death, which allowed her to change the will and change everything else and still manage all of the existing funds. So yeah, there was a power of attorney issued, signed by him, issued that said, in the event of my disappearance. Very odd, very... uh, And the lawyer even mentions, in his 30 years of being a lawyer, he's seen death, but he's never seen in the event of my disappearance. Like, who writes that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Just a very strange verbiage there. Uh, but at the same time, though, I mean, considering the guy was into a lot of shady things, too, uh, you know, maybe. But no, I don't even think you would still write that. You would still Who say death. That way, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, until the series, I didn't know that you, it took five years until somebody's determined deceased. So. And you know what? Carol Baskin didn't wait one day more because after that five years hit the day after. <laughs> She went and she got all that money. Executed the will. Yep. Executed the will. No problem. No no hate. No remorse. And then she got married, I think, like three months later or something to her now husband, Our Howard best. freaking Baskin. Creepy looking fellow, isn't he? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, he's just... Uh, oh, okay. Know. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Perfectly <laughs> normal. He looks well, like he's not creep. that normal. I mean, to be fair, if you're marrying Carol freaking Baskins, you got to be kind of a creep. <laughs> fair enough. We maybe should mention as well, Joe Exotica had some ideas of what happened to Carol Baskins' husband. So one, he mentions that he could have been eaten by tigers because she had a lot full of tigers. He mentions that tigers can uh, take a lot of acetic uh, acids in their body and even the bones, they don't even have to cough out. They can actually just absorb the bones on their body, and that's it. No more Don Lewis. He's done for. It. So that was one. He also said that uh, she dumped her husband in a septic tank after he was chewed off. <laughs> um, buried under the head. She buried. Is, he, is Don buried under the septic tank? Is that where he's at? That's when he actually went down to her her rescue and started boycotting outside of it. Oh, uh, my God. That bunny suit was hilarious. With the yeah. Bunny. And in and, and all due respect, tigers are going to prefer meat in, in any way, shape, or form. So if you're, if you're killing rabbits to get the meat or if you're killing whatever tigers prefer for meat, I'm, I, I don't have a clue. But that said... He obviously just exploited an event. Whoever took a picture of them with the dead rabbits, like, hey, we're going to feed them rabbits today. Yay! 
Um, probably not the best way. Well, to, no, to but that's the thing, work. though, because I don't even think it had anything to do with her feeding the rabbits. She, uh, her feeding the rabbits to the tigers, because she had mentioned that it was a really old photo, and they found these rabbits, or something, and they were injured. And they cleaned them up or something, but when they took the photo, they they still had the blood on well, their hands. They were hands, dead in that photo. Were they? Okay. Yeah, I've seen dead rabbits. They, those were dead rabbits. Oh, Jesus. All right. Fair enough. I, I, I can honestly say Sorry I Sorry to give you the insight into my redneckery, but... No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I am forever now haunted and traumatized. <laughs> My friend All has of a seen sudden, dead rabbits live. And, well, and, not live, and, but in person. And, and, and we just finished Easter. Dude, do, do I really need to hear this? Oh, dude, I have actually told my son that the Easter bunny was delicious. Oh, Jesus. I'm a bad parent. Yeah. He looks yeah. at, he flat out looks at me and says, Dad, you didn't eat the Easter bunny. That was candy. <laughs> he doesn't believe I <laughs> ate the Easter bunny. I didn't eat the Easter <laughs> bunny. He knows that. No, there you go. See, you're 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 your father of the year again. Oh yeah, yeah, perfect, great. <laughs> and so it just goes on and on, right? So uh, he claims, and everyone kind of thought this because there's been no investigation. There's still no body. You know, there's nothing. So he still his claim the fame is Carol Baskin killed her husband. But yeah, do you think that Carol actually, with what we know or what you know from just watching the documentary, where's your gut telling you? I would have a biased opinion if it was to go back to court and could not be a, uh, a juror because I believe she killed her husband. Yeah. I truly uh, believe that, that she hacked him, that she, and I don't know if she like fed him to the tigers. I can't say that. There would have been screaming and shouting and stuff like that. If she killed him, I think she killed him separate from the tigers. I think the tigers were the way to dispose of the body if that's the case. And well, I mean, at the end of the day, the screaming, no one would have heard it anyways. Right. She lives in like a crazy. She has so many acres of land. Um, no one would have been able to hear those screams anyways. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I mean, ah, yeah, I mean, I don't know how far you away from somebody you have to be for somebody to not hear you kill them, kill another person. But I know that I haven't ever tried to figure out exactly how far away I have to be from people. Well, I hope not, you Easter bunny murderer, you. Hey, he's delicious. <laughs> Magically delicious. Um, you can get yeah, a built no. peanut butter now. It's fantastic. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, no, so, I mean, look. Yeah, I, I, I would think maybe she'd kill their husband. Um, but again, just the fact because of how... Okay, one, it's so long ago, too, at the same time. But every time she talked about it on the documentary, it just seemed like she was shrugging it off or she was awkwardly laughing, answering it. But, you know, she's obviously heard the same stories over and years and years and years and years. And it's, it's at this point, it's 20 years ago uh, since he's died. I think he died in 2002. So it's, it's been a hot minute that he's died. Um, so, you know, judging by her interview, it's, it's hard to tell, uh, but she just awkwardly talks about it. And, you know, it seemed like they weren't really in the greatest of spaces when all this was happening anyway. So she probably didn't really care anymore. I just find it really sketchy with the whole money situation there afterwards. You know, you know what blows my mind about it? How do you find out? Like, how How do you... So I've obviously... You're, you've you done some business in your life. I've done some business in my life. We've had competitors that were against us. Um, things of that sort that have happened in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, how do you find out? Like, like I've never been like, mm, I'm going to figure out who, who what that guy has for dirt in his past. I mean, how did how did even Joe find out? Joe Exotic find out? You know, oh, how did he go because down I, you know, the story well, about Carol Bass? Well, I'm sure one. I'm sure this this guy was obsessed with her, right? So yeah. one, he definitely uh, did some dirt digging. Did some dirt digging, but at the same time, I'm sure people were saying that at the time he's disappeared. The husband and wife were fighting. Who are you going to point to directly right away? The wife. You know, he's missing. No one's there. The wife and then the whole ordeal with the um, with the will. And then 
a day after she's able to get the money, she does get the money. She cuts the entire family out of the will, but only leaves like 10%. There's just a lot of ongoing things that are really sketchy at the same time. Right? So yeah. everyone is alluding to... Okay, and she also has tigers. She takes care of tigers for a living. Or Which she makes her pretty safe. Yeah. You know, so... It's not that hard to lead to that kind of guess, especially if you're Joe Exotica, who's just completely crazy and extreme as it is, and will <laughs> tell you a story that he went, he was an astronaut when Neil Armstrong was an astronaut, and he was there with him through spirit, and he'll make it totally believable. This is the same guy, okay, when his husband at the time, damn it, there's so many husbands. Young shot himself. The, yes. This is the same time when uh, Travis, the young kid, shot himself. But yes, so uh, Travis uh, decided to play with a gun one day, and he said there wasn't anything in the chamber, and he put it towards his head, and pow. Said that a Ruger won't fire without a clip. Which, I mean, why do you even want to test that out? I am sorry, <laughs> even if I know there's nothing in the chamber, okay? I'm not Nothing at all. That, even if I, with even my if head. I checked it, yeah, I'm not practicing it with my head, okay? Because stranger things have happened. Um, and then yeah, so this is the same guy where two months later, okay, Joe Exotic is all hurt. He's all depressed. First of all, the funeral. He sings at his funeral one of his songs because Joe has to always be the center of attention. Two Absolutely. months later. He goes and marries some other dude, invites his ex-husband's mom to the wedding. She was the only one there and then never calls her again. This is the same guy that we're talking about here. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's a bottle of crazy, like I said, for this guy. <laughs> like, it's just zonkers and then everything so as joe exotic is dealing with his ego his craziness he decides to run for president at uh, for the 2016 presidency uh technically obviously he doesn't get enough followers or enough money but he still tries to campaign doesn't work too well i think he got like 10 percent or something he was like a third party did you vote for him jason well it's not in your uh, area i did not vote for him no <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> but the, just living proof that Donald Trump was not our craziest candidate. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then he tries that, he fails, and then he tries to become governor. Um, was it Oklahoma? Yep, of Oklahoma. Yeah. Governor of Oklahoma, and some people were actually kind of rallying behind him. Um, well, his campaign manager himself says said that uh, um, if, if, if he could get Joe in front of him, they would vote for him. I mean, right. so the guy must have a, a level of charisma that's just through the roof. But hey, he's a heavy manipulator. If you can get all these people to come work for you, give them a little trailer to live in, give them expired Walmart meat and uh, <laughs> say, hey, here you are. And then you get to enjoy the real show. Me, Joe Exotic. Here's the deal. If, if Joe Exotic had a chance at winning, uh, that was probably his best chance because we didn't have a very solid card there as a whole. Yeah. And so, anyway. and then it's just it's just bad though. But honestly, everyone in this documentary is just messed up. Even you know they they talk about other zookeepers, uh, owners of zoos. So obviously we got Carol Baskin with Big Cat Rescue. We also got. Uh, Ardo, Ardo, what's this for? That's it. What did he own, though? I'm trying to find his. Oh, what was his name? <laughs> Doc. A harem of women. Yes. <laughs> he he would, he would actually, uh, so they, they were similar in that Joe would find manipulatable people um, who he could manipulate the young men into relationships or, or you know, transients who, who needed. Um, Doc would, Doc would, and still does find young women to be a part of basically his harem and, and sleeps with them and, and, uh, you know, just found, finds women who are gullible for fuzzy little tigers, which yeah. isn't really that hard. You put a, I mean, you put a baby tiger in front of me and I would be like, yeah, I'll hang out with you, man. Like, <laughs> it, 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 it honestly reminded me, uh, all these people are the same. 
okay? Because Doc is a cult for women, okay? He basically just manipulates the woman to stay there. And I, I remember his, was it his wife or one of his girlfriends at the time where she said she would work like 18 hour days uh, straight and she'd get paid like a hundred dollars a week or something. Like, get, I don't think his got paid. Just like Carol's didn't get paid. No, his got paid, it's but it was like a hundred dollars a week. It was like a hundred dollars a week. All of Carol's workers were free. They're for, for free. Cause it's and a she had and she had tier systems, bro. She's like, these people in the blue, and there's people in the green. Oh, do you know that girl? Oh, I don't know anybody who's unless they've been here for five years. Like, what? Who's working? Five years of free slave labor. Oh man, but they're all master manipulators. Oh, like, absolutely. Hard. Uh, you know, uh, Antle wasn't any different. Antle was a cult for women. Joe Exotica was a cult for convicts people who were down on their life. Jeff Lowe was just a convict, a con man, if you will, who yeah. knew how to manipulate people as well. I feel bad for nobody in this story. Um, <laughs> at all. Like The only people I feel bad for aren't even people. I feel bad for the animals that Tigers. are being kept, kept. Yeah. You know, like, so they're, they're through with this feud, right? He sells it to Jeff. Jeff has it now. Jeff starts filming Joe go kind of crazy. Joe is embezzling a bunch of money from Jeff. He's taking money from Jeff to... He stole money from from the zoo for his campaign. And then at one point, Joe Exotic decides to leave the zoo. We don't really know why yet, but he decides to leave the zoo. uh, I don't remember. Was that before or after the producer kind of gets kicked out of the zoo? Oh, no, that's that's after. So the, the producer first, remember we mentioned the filmmaker was producing a bunch of stuff. So what happened there is during the whole Carol Baskin lawsuit and all that, where now the FBI was actually investigating a bunch of stuff and they were going to go confiscate a bunch of things. Where their home studio was is, blow, uh, yeah, it got blown up, lit on fire, uh, arsonized. I don't think arsonized is the word, Arson- but it should we're be. We're going with it. I love it. Let's keep arsonized. it. Fair enough. Got arsonized. It was blown up. Um, and Joe Exotic was apparently not there. The Some of the zookeepers found it. Uh, this is where they had all the footage of the equipment, all the footage equipment, all the tapes that the, the, the producer had was all just done for. It was finished. And it just so happens that a lot of the stuff that the FBI was also going to confiscate were a lot of files and hard drives within that studio and look at that it just all of suddenly blows up so there's nothing I think it's interesting. So somebody asked me today about this if i think if i thought that the producer had lit it on fire i was like i i no. he's a greedy bastard don't get me wrong he's a greedy okay. bastard um who's, who's trying to steal just in it for the money of course, you should be if you're going to go hang out with a bunch of crazies for several years. <laughs> there should probably be a little bit of greed to your reward. That said, they even imply at one point that he's the one who lit it all on fire. I can't say that I think he is. And here's why. I really, really do believe that he he saw that as a meal ticket. And now mm-hmm. seeing that Netflix made money off of it, it was a meal ticket, you know? Okay, yeah, so one note, I don't think it was actually him, though. Um, I don't either. Just, I, I don't at all. Well, I think, it one, it was either Joe Exotica, and he made this whole little ploy that he wasn't there, and maybe got one of his goons to do it or something. But I don't think it was the producer at all, just because then he just left. You know what I mean? He yeah. he he just got so fed up. He was crying. He mentioned that he was, like, depressed for... This might have also been on... No, no, I think it was on the last episode. He mentioned that he was depressed for quite some time. And, you know, the guy's not thinking... Netflix wasn't even a thing back then. I think Netflix was still doing VHSs or DVD rentals. It wasn't even a streaming service. By mail. (laughs) By mail, you know what I mean? It was... uh, I wish I actually was a part of, technically. I should have gotten some funds in Netflix back then. Damn it. So I, I honestly don't think it was him. Um, I, I, I honestly I agree think with you. I think it was Joe in some way, shape, or form. But it was, it was often it was a few Joe. Answer. 
He had an alibi. And you know, and then they mentioned even on the on the Robert Moore podcast that uh, when he was actually there talking to Joe, they had a little donation uh, bin for to give money to help rebuild. So lo and behold, Joe Exotic rebuilds uh, with all new stuff. Him and the producer have a have a falling out. He's super pissed that he lost all that footage. Which, <coughs> where is this footage from then? It, it must not be from that. I, I assume some of that got saved, but they said they had none of it backed up. So then I'm like, but what am I watching right now? You know what I mean? I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. Maybe most of this footage is from Joe's, from Joe's uh, personal collection. Maybe. And that's where he also mentioned, too, like there's a lot of stuff you see in those videos where he's harming animals and he's uh, they even mentioned the horse. I don't I believe this was on the documentary as well, where they mentioned that it was one of the visitors. Recap. Yeah, exactly. Where they one of the visitors gave Joe the horse because Joe was like, oh, you'll be able to keep it here. I'll take good care of it since you have no space. We have much space here. The visitor leaves. And then not five minutes later, he takes a gun, shoots the horse and says, that's tagger meat. I don't take care of nobody else's animals. Just that's my own. This will be meat for our taggers. Oh, man. For his employees or for the pizza he's serving to customers or whatever. Oh, Jesus. Oh, right. Yeah, that pizza store. That seemed horrible. And they were selling the expired meat. <laughs> oh. Made by yours truly, Joe Exotic. Oh, man. And then, yeah, so, and then it just starts getting crazy. And at one point towards the end, he starts trying to come out with this plot to actually want to kill uh, Carol Baskin. Or he just says it a bunch of times. He's really talking about it. Uh, but then at one point, the feds are really on his butt about other things, about abusing animals, about, well, there's basically a case, right? There's basically a case lingering that we find out. Jeff Lowe is involved. He's giving him a whole bunch of information. Um, we also got the Hitman. Oh, you're talking about the Hitman in the, in the show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not Bret Hart. Not, not Bret Hart. Why would I talk about Bret Hart? Well, where would Bret Hart be involved in this situation? <laughs> His name's the Hitman. Come on. Jeez. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, a Alan is a, is a transient that Jeff Lowe brings on. Um, that he's known... He's a really good guy, is what Alan says. That he's known <laughs> several years from other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no. And then, so basically there's this whole thing. Joe Exotic runs away. He doesn't want to be found. He's not using his phone. Jeff and Alan are now talking with the feds. They're in cahoots with the feds to get Joe Exotic caught. Uh, they basically mention, Alan mentions that Joe was offering him $3,000 to go and kill Carol Baskin. The feds were even following, following Alan at one point, but he never actually did it. I like how in the documentary, though, he's always like, I apparently went here, and I apparently went there, and apparently I chickened out, and da-da-da-da. I'm like, bro, you already got, you already were, like, doing this thing operation with the cops, though, and it's been done. Why are you still trying to, like, plead the fifth? But I guess, you know, I'd probably be the same way. I, he, well, he was hopped up on drugs, too, at the time, too, so. No, fair enough. Uh, that's very possible. But at the same time, I still think he doesn't want to try to incriminate himself in any way. Because even that guy that also helped them out there, that weird businessman dude that owns strip clubs and stuff, James Garretson. Oh, that dude was weird. The ski do riding eye of the tiger playing in the background businessman. <laughs> That's got to be, for some reason, the only image and video that sticks out in my head throughout this entire eight episodes. It was so weird. The guy, the guy is creepy. Ugh. I mean, if they're going to do a human version of Chucky. <laughs> Like, I know who I'm picking. A grown-up human Chucky. That is exactly what he is. And he even mentions in the documentary that I don't think this is over. Uh, he still thinks that Jeff Lowe is going to get his and so on. Basically, no one in this documentary uh, is clean at all. Yeah, no, 
Uh, but he finally gets found. He gets caught in a parking lot and gets arrested. Then they start to indict him on all of these charges. He was first and foremost convicted of two counts of murder for hire, uh, which of course is Carol Baskin. And then in 2017, one was from Allen back in 2017 and Maldonado Passage approached an undercover federal agent posing as a hitman. He asked him to murder Baskin, but no money was exchanged when Glover finally tested against Maldonado Passage. So Joe Exotic uh, was also charged with eight counts of falsifying records. Uh, basically, during his trial, prosecutors revealed uh, evidence that uh, proved Maldonado Passage violated the Lacey Act on eight different occasions by falsifying records for his wildlife transactions. He was also convicted on nine counts of violating an Endangered Species Act and was convicted and sentenced on 19 of those counts, which he will now spend 22 years in prison with three years of supervised release when he gets out. I don't understand the number of people who are asking, who, who want, like, Donald Trump to pardon him. Like, well, here's <laughs> the thing, right? So we heard about this. First of all, we heard the whole Cardi B GoFundMe situation, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this didn't make sense. Cardi B, I guess, watched the documentary. She felt bad for Joe... Uh, Joe Exotic, and she was putting a GoFundMe to, I don't know, get him released or something? Or I don't know what the hell it was. GoFundMe said, no, you can't. He's a convicted felon. Can't be raising money for anybody. It's stupid, because no one here is innocent of anything. No. Okay. Well, the I mean, Saf he, isn't. But whatever. She was just there working, but I'm sure she has seen stuff, too. It's okay? not she. She identifies as a man. All right. Fair enough. Um, so, Saf probably has seen some pretty dirty stuff, too, though. Oh, yeah. I just I don't think she's going to prison. No. No. I don't think the guy with no legs is going to prison. Right. I, think, I think there were some upstanding members in, involved in this. No, no, no. Um, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm mainly referring to Carol. I'm mainly referring to Jeff. I'm mainly referring to Alan. I'm mainly referring to Antle. I'm also referring... Uh, I don't think Ansel's going to prison. He's a creep, but I don't think he's going to prison. I mean, they did mention that the cops were there back in 2019 over three tigers. Uh, apparently, the tigers were sold from, like, one place to another, and there was a whole investigation there, but nothing necessarily happened. It was just an investigation. Um, we also did actually see, though, in the documentary, if you read one of the papers that Finley shows to the producer... It shows that Antle had bought three tigers from uh, Joe Exotic in, like, March of 2017 or something. So I'm like, isn't that technically illegal? I don't know what the what the value is on Zoo Exchange, you know? And so, uh, but... I mean, let's be honest about this. Anybody who wants to own an exotic pet that is lethal in any way, shape, or form... And, and I apologize if I upset any of your your listeners... They're That's a little fine. bit crazy. Mm -hmm. So if you want to own a scorpion, you're a little bit crazy. There's something wrong with you. Right. If you want to own a king cobra, there's something wrong with you. So <laughs> that's where Doc Antle sits for me. And this is why I really would like them to continue on. Maybe it won't now because everything's out and, you know, no one, none of these people want to convict themselves. If we look hard enough, there's definitely going to be some shady stuff there. Jeff is definitely yeah. shady. Alan, there's a bunch of shady stuff there, too. You know, Joe isn't an angelic individual either. This guy's completely whacked out, out of his mind. The only thing is, the only reason why I feel bad for Joe, ah, is it even feel bad? He was just... He's an idiot, though, because he was the one that talked the most. He was the one that whatever said what was on his mind. Everyone took advantage of Joe, off Joe's character, because Joe was ultimately the one that, that made Joe go to jail. Because it was through all the videos, it was through everything that he said, and this is why yeah, I don't I mean, feel bad I, for Joe. I think Jeff set Joe up. I really do. I do. I really do. And you know what? I don't feel sorry for him at the same time. Because how many people did you manipulate? How many people did Joe manipulate? Karma. That's karma 
exactly, you know? But then it, again, Jeff, I don't know why so many people trust Jeff. We also heard about the other guy that went into business with him. They he started helping him out. They ran like another zoo. And then there was a falling out there because he apparently put up a lot of money and it wasn't 50-50 partnership. I forgot the guy's name, but he apparently was like a decent dude. And that uh, that zoo, so they're still at the GW location, which makes me wonder why haven't they set up with that other zoo. But development still. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Lost partner, so. Well, I mean, also now the corona thing is going to take a little while as well. This is only a month, but, you know. Because um, keep in mind, this was all really 2019, right? That they showed yeah. at the end, late 2019. So late 2019, these things do take a while. Beauty about documentaries is when you're filming for years and years and years, you can, of course, cut it to the main parts that happen. But a lot of these things obviously took years on end. So they never mentioned when it was supposed to be opened. Uh, the last thing we saw is that Jeff and the other guy broke partnership and uh, that guy didn't trust Jeff. But it's still a, it, how great of a manipulator do you have to be, though? where your history perceives yourself as being a distrusting individual, but yet you still become partners with people and still end up screwing them over off the same exact things they know that you do. Like, oh my God. <clears throat> I don't I, disagree in the least. I, I mean, like, ah, like, damn, like the power of words, though. You know what I mean? That's why I love podcasting. That's why I like writing. The power of words, but just the power of words, how we say things. When when salesmen try and sell you onto something, um, you know, you mean you make it sound like it's the best thing in the world. This is how marketing is developed. This is everything. Everything is through how you say certain things and what certain words you use to get your point across. That's all you need. And then you can make someone believe that they can be the president or that they'd be the best president or that they would be the best governor. They are all the same human being. Joe, Jeff, Antel, Carol, all these there people was, was are one. the same. And what was messed up, by the way, um, in the podcast that I'm hearing uh, I, I, by the way, I'm not getting paid from this podcast guy at all. Um, it's just, it's a really, I'm just so addicted to knowing more about this that I'm just trying to get my hands on everything that I possibly can. Um, in the podcast, he, uh, Carol, is it the podcast? No, I think it's actually on their big cat rescue, um, big cat rescue YouTube page. They started talking about the tiger King and her husband, uh, Howard puts out a personal message to everybody. And he basically mentions that the producers of the show, when they originally came up to them to do this documentary, it wasn't supposed to be about Joe Exotic or the Tiger King. It was genuinely supposed to be about saving the animals. They manipulated technically Howard and Carol Baskin because they told them that it was going to be a saving the tigers kind of documentary, almost as extreme and as solidifying as that big fish documentary. The big, I think it's the big black fish or black fish with the sea world. It was like a really popular documentary uh -huh. that exposed what sea world did. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So they, manipulated carol or maybe maybe they thought they were going to do that at the time initially it was it was set up because here's the deal uh somebody knew about joe or rick would have never been there somebody knew how how entertaining of a person he was but when you find out there's so much good material there you know, maybe that's what you go with because it isn't a show. Well, it is kind of a show about Joe. Oh, it's a show, but it's called the Tiger King. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the Tiger Queen. It's not the Big Cat Rescue Mission. It's not uh, the Big Cat Rescue Act. I don't think that's what it was called. It's you know what I mean? It's literally yeah. called the Tiger it's King. It's a show about Joe. Don't don't you dare yawn on my podcast. I'm going to hey, edit that anyways. Sorry, it's like 11 o'clock <laughs> here. 
Which means it's like midnight Which, there, or it's 1 a.m. Exactly. there. Man. No, no, it's 12. It's 12. <laughs> yeah, you guys killed it on uh, the last uh, invasion of the briefcase snatchers when I wasn't there. The WBU show. Your Canadian accents, although I don't even have one. I probably speak better English. You do than have a little one. No, I don't. But the Justinisms are far better than any Canadian accent. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank <laughs> right? Thank you. It's me. It's me. It's JLB. Sorry. That's my name. Don't wear it out. And I love gonna... both of him and I did that in unison in that podcast. No, no, no. That's it. And um, But I was. it's great because I was actually trying to find, because I heard that uh, Carol Baskin was also trying to sue Netflix. She gets he... paid for the podcast. Well, not the podcast, for the, but the for actual the documentary. Yeah, that's it. So I, that's why I don't think I'm sure they kind of. Uh, well, it's like for instance, she was on People though, and she was uh, basically slamming the Netflix special, which obviously you know you're gonna do. There's a lot of people like Jeff, basically all the manipulators who didn't like the show, right? I mean, if you want people to watch your documentary, there are two th- two ways to do it: have Morgan Freeman narrate it, or. Yep have a spin to it in some way, shape or form. Those are the only ways to get it pulled off. You know, I mean, ain't nobody going to listen to. It would have been a very boring documentary. I mean, I would imagine the documentary would have went somewhere along the lines of when Carol was showing all her tiger print stuff. You know, yeah. I remember that yeah. when she was Hell, all, everything in her house. Print oh, Jesus. It would have just really boring. But no, I mean, look, I mean, at the end of the day though, it's their fault. Like, you know, people, you manipulate people all the time. You manipulate all your volunteers to go and work for you for no money. And, you know, kudos to you for doing it, um, I guess. But, you know, you just got conned in your own game, sweetheart. That's all that was. And that's what all, I mean, that's why Jeff's upset. That's why all of them are upset that, that aren't in jail. The one that's in jail is upset that he's not he's not able to collect on the fame is all. That's it. And it's just the irony of it all. Joe Exotic is the most famous that he'll ever be. And this is the moment he has been striving for his entire life. But now he is the one locked up in a cage. This commentary, <laughs> if if there isn't a murder for hire lawsuit, like that's what makes you go after this commentary, isn't it? No, what I'm saying is Netflix doesn't even pursue this if there isn't a murder for hire plot. Oh, right. For sure. This would have been a great documentary without... And that's Wait. what I mean. You could have easily have done one on just Joe Exotica, and that's it. Yeah. That guy is entertaining. His yeah. his his craziness. You know, you could have easily have done something on this crazy guy owning a zoo, having these meth heads work for him, and then trying to run for president and running for governor. Um, Rick had it 100% right. 100% right. He knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, yeah. He definitely, and he was on to something. He was oh, definitely yeah. on something for sure. Got him. We need a crazy friend and do a documentary on him. Who shall be our crazy friend? Well, <laughs> you're in America. I'm sure you'll find more crazies over there. Than yeah, oh, yeah. Here. There's way more crazy here than there is in Canada. <laughs> but no, that's that's pretty much it. So to sum it up, I'll let you summarize your thoughts on this show, good sir. Uh, I guess my thoughts are to just give it a final summary. Jeff Lowe did in in. In no undeterminable fact, I guess, in my opinion, Jeff Lowe, <laughs> I truly, truly believe he set up Joe. I think it was his idea to set up the hit. I think it was his idea to turn it over to the FBI. I think it was Jeff's plan to get rid of Joe. And if he got rid of Carol Baskins at the same time, that's great. I mean, for heaven's sakes, Jeff suggested Alan to Joe. Right. You know? <laughs> like, how, how is he not part of that, you know? And, and I think he dreamt up the whole plan with the FBI. And if Joe, if Joe Exotic gets off, it, it will be because of uh, somehow being able to prove entrapment of some type for that, for the murder for hire, um, which would be a huge piece of a sentence cut back. So I, I do think I do. <laughs> I also believe that that Joe Exotic said, "Hey, Alan." Why don't you kill her for me? I'll give you three thousand dollars. You know, like I don't know. I, I, the, I, so yeah, yeah, I mean, no, Joe is not going to get his sentence, even if there was entrapment. At the end of the day, he's still handing him money. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and, and so, so he's still guilty for for attempting to do that. I think Jeff's going to go to jail. 
Uh, I think the lemur guy, i.e. Um, Sidu guy or <laughs> adult Chucky, adult diabetic Chucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that guy, I think, eventually is going to go to jail for something. Um, I would want to follow these guys for an extended amount of time because I think you could do three or four more um, documentaries. I I think Doc would still do a documentary for them, so I think they could go do one with Doc. Um, it might not be on Netflix. It might have to be on Pornhub. But... <laughs> uh, they Even could do Jeff. Fun. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? What about Jeff and his wife yeah, and his babysitter? True. Oh, my God. That's also a Pornhub premium waiting to happen. <laughs> I don't think Joe stays in for 22 years. I think he gets good behavior, realistically. Uh, but I think those other two are going to prison. I th- I do think Carol Baskin killed her husband um, or at least was involved she's, in his disappearance. She's never... Yeah, she's never going to prison for that, though. No, she's not going to prison. Um, it could shut down her rescue, though. I think public opinion can really quickly... I mean, court of public opinion can really affect a bank uh, a payroll pretty quickly. Right. Really quickly. Um, and so, obviously, they still have plenty of money, but she may not be playing with tigers anymore. Mm-hmm. Um that said, court of public opinion also turns into, oh, poor Carol Baskin. She's a cool cat and kitten. I'm going to go work for her for free. Not anymore. Oh, my God. The Carol Baskin memes are just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I, I don't think Howard ends up dead. I think Howard's safe now. <laughs> That's what I will say. Howard yeah, I th- think Howard is the safest guy in the world right now. He's definitely not going to end up dead, um, and especially after this Netflix special airing yeah. and everybody knows what's up. No, he's the safest guy in America. If, if he breaks his leg, he's <laughs> they're going to pursue Carol for that. I mean, <laughs> he is the safest guy in America right now. If, um, if he gets a splinter... All right, they're gonna go off the curl basket. Yes, <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, public yes. enemy number one. So, like, it's and look, and if she honestly didn't have anything to do with it, it sucks, you know, because you're gonna you you have this entire thing against you for the rest of your life, and you didn't have anything to do with it. Do I think she didn't have anything to do with it? No, but at the same time. Dawn was sketchy, man. They didn't really go way too much into detail, but he wasn't uh, the cleanest whistle in the whistle cabinet. I'll tell you that much. I, I think Rick ends up getting a Netflix uh, a documentary that that goes pretty well at some point, maybe about his life in Norway now. I, I can't help but think that dude's done some pretty sketchy stuff in his life too. Again, I don't think he lit the stuff on fire. Um, I find it astonishing, absolutely astonishing. There's no mention of the fact that they have alligators at this zoo until they all burn to death. Right? That's what I was saying. I'm like, and that part to me, just the more dangerous animal is what, isn't what we're going to talk about here. You know? Right. Um, we didn't mention the, the, the event where the, the Walmart truck was a little low on food. Right. You know, we failed to mention that. I'm like, what? Or Joe getting attacked by one and nobody helps him. No <laughs> one helps him. At all. Like, At oh, all. but that thing too. Like, yeah, but who's going to help him? Are you going to go help him? Well, I mean, usually they spray him with water from the looks of it and nobody even. Oh, no, no. Put the garden hose down. I bet you, though, people secretly would have wanted it. Well, one, the camera guy isn't going to do anything. Getting that footage would have been a gold mine, first and foremost. Okay, it would have been another. Uh, what was that other one? Um, it was the guy that got hit by uh, mauled by a tiger. It's the other guy. Oh, the uh, Siegfried and Roy. Siegfried and Roy. Like, dude, how long was that talked about for? That was footage gold. It was horrible, but it was footage gold. You know what I mean? The camera guys didn't yeah. care. They were. They wanted to see it happen. And plus, he had guns with them. He's. <laughs> Especially when they've seen him abuse animals and most likely have shot animals a bunch of times. They they knew 
Joe Exotic wasn't scared to pull out his gun and freaking Glock him. You know, like yeah, either he's gonna he's gonna kill a tiger on camera, or he's going to uh, he's either gonna kill a tiger on camera or he's gonna die on camera. One of the two's gonna happen. Right, that's it. <laughs> either way, it's it's gold. Um, and yeah, so to to that point though, Carol most likely had something to do with her husband's disappearance. Joe Exotica isn't a saint. He's a manipulator, just like everyone else in uh, in it as well. Um, Jeff, I think, is eventually going to get what's coming to him. So is Gerritsen. Gerritsen seems like he's going to start talking. The human Chucky is not going to get away with it. Uh, he just seems like he talks too much. And he's going to get himself in trouble. Because he even said it himself. He doesn't think this is over. People are still going to get convicted for this. And... Um, I really hope they, they continue on with doing more or even just talking to Joe Exotica from prison. Do you know what I mean? Getting more info out there. I think people would want to know more of Joe's story now that he's in prison and just hear his randomness that he would talk about too. We've heard a little bit on the documentary, but we want yeah. more. <laughs> or, you know, more of what he thought. Uh, but apparently, I think it was, was it safe or it was someone? I don't know who it was, but they mentioned that Joe does know about the show. He's mailing fans that have known him for a while to start Facebook groups and sending out messages out there. Fortunately, I don't know which Facebook groups these are because I would be so stoked. I'm just obsessed with this Tiger King uh, whole <laughs> shebang. The beginning was kind of slow. I, I was kind of like in and out of like boredom for a bit but then it just started picking up and it started picking up when they started talking about carol baskin and the disappearance of her husband so you honestly really needed that you truly needed that joe exotic is entertaining but that disappearance thing just hooked us in and then we wanted to know more and then we were intrigued by the feud between the two and then we were intrigued by the uh the handyman slash hitman slash con man of Jeff Lowe. I was intrigued by the cult of uh, Antle. Uh, you know, like they, they, they had a lot of stuff in the documentary well meshed together. I think it maybe could have only been five episodes long. I don't think it needed to be seven. Or there was a lot of redundancy in it. I would agree. I, at the same time, how much footage do you really have, especially when a lot of it was burnt down in that producer uh, thing, right? So... Uh, Rick gave him maybe everything that he had and here you go let's make something out of it and that's all he had you know so three things to take away from the story thing number one don't trust anyone who owns exotic pets okay nope. if they can kill any member of your family don't trust them at all <laughs> number two know your audience I guess in terms of manipulating people because <laughs> they uh, sometimes knowing their audience is, is is you know I mean Doc, Joe, Jeff all of them knew their audience uh, crap Carol when they were manipulating people they knew their audience So I don't even know I don't even know how the girl that was with Doc Antle for a while she mentioned that her father had driven her to the zoo. Yeah. And then said, be careful or something. Don't fall in love with your tiger owning boss. Right. And then what does she do? She does exactly that. And then the father never sees her again for like the longest time. Like, I want to <laughs> know more about Antle's story, to be honest with you. This is another Jonestown scenario. And man, that documentary was good. And I feel like Antle's the... Uh, the, the one right up there. Because if anyone could get you to drink out of that poison cup, it's Mr. Antle himself, man. Jesus. Oh, yeah, Doc Antle. Oof. I, I wouldn't disagree with you in the least there. Um, and I don't know. Did I give a third one? I don't know. I don't think you did. Enjoy Netflix. That's my third one. <laughs> uh, social distance with each other and enjoy Netflix right now because there's good stuff on there. Oh, man. It's... Well, and yeah, so my three things are manipulation is key. You can manipulate you can manipulate anyone uh, to do whatever you want them to do. 
Essentially, we've seen that in this documentary. No one is innocent. Everybody has a shady past. Last but not least, there is too many damn animals that are captive, and you should honestly never support any zoo um, at all. Any zoo. We have, a, we have a world-renowned zoo in Nebraska. <laughs> Why is it world-renowned? Look up the Omaha Zoo. It's the number one rated zoo in the country, in the world. In the world. Oh, gee yeah. golly. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I, I just don't trust people. I think animals should be left in the wild where they belong. I wouldn't disagree with that. You know, like, I don't trust people to take care of animals. People are just assholes. Like... If you have a bad day especially or something you have a bad day like you're you're only so committed to doing something until you're not look at joe exotic he eventually he at first was that he wanted to protect the animals and so on carol baskin still on that protecting animal train but she's just manipulating everybody um i just don't trust people to take care of exotic animals these are why exotic animals aren't pets Dogs are pets, but I don't trust certain people to even take care of dogs. <laughs> you know, like, no, like, let's be honest out. about this. We can only trust a small percentage of people with their own children. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, so all in all, honestly, I binge watch the hell out of it. Uh, great story. I want more. I need more. That bonus episode was garbage. It did not. Uh, give more to my cravings. I still want more. I'm still hungry. I still want that expired Walmart meat. No, no, I don't. But <laughs> if it's, if it's going to give me a, another eight episodes of the Tiger King, I am down because these individuals are shady, are sadistic, are manipulating, are liars, but I want more. And Netflix has to give me more just as long as I don't have to do any business with any of these people, I will certainly watch them on Netflix and enjoy the shadiness of everyone involved with the Tiger King. Yeah, they are some shady, shady people, man. Oh, Jesus, tell me about it. There's just too many people in the world. At least 50% of them or 80% of them are shady. Only 20% are good, which is very a horrifying number, but I firmly believe that's the case. But, Jason, I would like to thank you, good sir for coming on to this podcast here at, uh, and uh, you know this is the binge portion of the podcast where basically we just talk about reviews i know you're a big movie guy you like watch certain tv shows so anytime you watch a certain movie and you have a lot to say on it or whatever have you i i always welcome you to come on board and talk about it we can certainly uh you know just talk about review about whatever you might have liked or might have not liked because uh it was a good time it was uh definitely a good time do you have anything you want to say no, closing, no closing remarks just watch out for carol baskin definitely watch out for carol Ask baskin carol baskin that freaking carol baskin that biatch uh, that's it. Well, thanks guys for listening. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Tiger King, what are you waiting for? If you don't like loud retinacs who shoot pistols and uh, want to become president, then you might not like your current president. <laughs> oh, man. And that's it. And uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you can follow me as always at Real Talk Radio 8 on Twitter, uh, at Real Talk Radio Online on Instagram. Uh, anchor.fm slash RTR is where you can find all the podcasts and social medias for Real Talk Radio. Hope you have enjoyed this. Oh, thanks, buddy. You're the bomb diggity. Uh, but you can definitely check them out still at Raw and Order WBU. If you like a little wrestling, that's where you can go and check us out. We're uh, all three of us are there to uh, talk a little wrestling with everybody. And yeah, that's it. So thanks again, bud. And I hope you guys have enjoyed. That is it. Justin JLB signing out. Take a seat. Ciao for now. Sit back and relax because you are listening to Real Talk Radio, where the talk gets real. Welcome to the Big Show.